Uh, but uh, the so we're going to go through how to determine economic viability, what challenges are faced by different online retailers, what the trends are in the online service industry, and the trends in consumption of media and online content, and then online publishing, and then online entertainment. So we're going to go through all of that today. Oh, great. Thanks, thanks, Mankesh. So my first question is, what was the last product or service that you purchased online? And why did you choose to purchase it online rather than in store? Yeah. 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 Okay. You, what, uh, what, sorry, can you say that again? Sorry. So I, um, I ordered my... Okay. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, it's fast. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so, so yeah, it's great. Um, so it's fast, and also when the stores are closed, you can get it. So that's that's great. Yeah. What about you, Christina? Okay. Smart, yeah, convenience, um, speed, yeah, like you don't have to go anywhere, it just delivers right to your door, so that's, that's uh, those are positives. Anyone online uh, want to answer those questions? Okay, if anyone online has an answer, just feel free to jump in while I'm going. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, there's been an increase in e-commerce because it's more convenient and also a lot of shops were shut down. They had to do a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, deliveries or in-person pickup because you couldn't go into a lot of small shops. And there's been a lot more uh, goods online and then virtual merchants have been doing subscription based revenue models so that means that you pay a monthly fee and then you get let's say a product per week then that's that's happened like sometimes I know that there's this there's a few of those services where you get like a basket per week or, or toys per week for kids um, and then you when you stop paying the monthly fee you don't get the weekly delivery anymore and then, so big big data and analytics has been used to predict to do predictive marketing. So, uh, so targeting products towards you. So if you see on YouTube, the ads that you get are probably stuff that you like. Uh, you're gonna get like, uh, what do you usually search for on yeah. YouTube? Yeah. Okay, so you you must do you get ads. For a lot of that same yeah. stuff, that's great. Yeah. They, okay, makes sense. Yeah, they um, like for me, I get a lot of I get a lot of ads for. Uh, so I'm teaching this course. I get a lot of Ty Lopez ads, uh, and I get a lot of like Gary V stuff. Even though like they're not those guys are those guys are terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a lot of those gurus who pitch all that. Um, they you got to pay, you know them, and uh, they they say it's like get rich quick that sort of thing. <laughs> um, what about you, Christina? Um, what types of things do you search for, and what types of ads you get? Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's uh yeah, they they use that data to uh yeah, to target products that they think we can buy. The they think we'll buy. And what about everyone online? What what do you search for and what's like what's promoted to you in terms of advertising? So yeah, if if anyone online has any has any wants okay. So mainly shoes, clothes, electronics, and great. Okay, excellent. Do they do they advertise those products towards you uh, after you search for that? Yeah, exactly. So they use your search history data and like what you search for, and they use that to promote ads towards you because you're more likely to purchase those product products because you're you're interested in those products. That's great, that's great. So the, uh, the so about 20% of the US uh, economy is personal consumption of goods. So that's a, put, that's a good market for, uh, for promoting products. Yeah, yeah, also, yeah, sometimes we, when we talk also, it's, we'll start to pop up, yeah. Because they have access to our microphones, and they use that microphone data to, um, to target, like, whatever we're talking about, they'll target an ad towards. Yeah. And, yeah, they use that data, and, yeah, if you're talking about something, they're going to target an ad towards it, yeah. And that's why when they always ask, uh, do you consent to providing, uh, like for the app to access your like microphone? They always ask that, right? So you gotta allow or deny. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's uh, and then a lot of the time the terms of use that they have are way too long and the the they're way too long no one's gonna no one reads it and it's got a lot of legal talk a lot of lawyer talk and the like people that haven't gotten to law school they can't understand a lot of the vocabulary so yeah you just press accept and you don't understand what you just read which is a problem because like they i don't know how they get around it because like they need to write it in simple language like yeah. i think i think they i think they probably have a lot of leverage over the government so they can get away with it but yeah because they shouldn't be able to get away with it because normal people can't read that stuff yeah like only lawyers can what? yeah i know only lawyers can understand that and it, yeah there must be some sort of like yeah there needs to be a change with that because only lawyers can understand it, and normal people can. Normal people are accepting it, right? So, it's it's definitely a challenge. It's it's a problem that we have. So here, uh, the retail industry, uh, there's seven segments: so clothing, durable goods, etc. So clothing, you can make a clothing line if you want. That would be great. You can do, yeah, mail order, telephone order. That's that's more it's kind of like the online retail sector but it was it was it's still used but uh it was more like before online you can it's it's a good way to go uh, sometimes then so there's the US retail industry is general merchandise consumer durable specialty stores food and beverage moto that's the mail order telephone order uh, gas and fuel and online retail. So that's that's the so all that encompasses the four and a half trillion dollars of uh, so all of that goes to four and a half trillion yeah per year in the U.S. So twenty percent of the U.S. economy is all that. 
Yeah. So then the so the good thing about internet is that there's you can you can find the lowest prices because you just search. You just search all of them and then you figure out like you kind of compare and compare them and you figure out which one's the lowest. And then anyone can go on the internet. Like it's low low cost for entry, low operating cost and higher efficiency. Um, so the, you don't have to have a physical store, so it's pretty efficient. Hi. Oh, no problem, no problem. And then, so, hi. So then the, so it's, it's very easy to enter and very low cost. You don't have to have a physical store to enter an, to make an online store. And then this is forcing a lot of physical store mer merchants out of business because they can't, they're, they're competing with these people that have online stores. And these people with the online stores, they have a cost advantage because they don't have to pay as much for operating as these physical stores. So these online store people are getting, are kind of getting the physical store people out of business because they're just winning at the cost war. Like their costs are way lower, so they're winning because the costs are way lower. Um, so, uh, a lot of this, this happened a lot in the COVID-19 pandemic because a lot of these companies were, a lot of these stores were closing down these physical stores and they couldn't op open. So they had to, they had to go online basically. Even though they had that physical space, they couldn't even use it or it was, it was just kind of, it was there, but no one could go in and it was not even needed. So they were all pretty much competing online at that point. Now it's different because you can open physical stores now, but back then in 2020, like online stores were, every store had to be an online store. Yeah, you had no choice over the matter. Yeah, and because you couldn't open your physical store. Uh, and then part of 2021 was like that too. So it's the, so what Walmart started as a physical chain, and ever since the internet came about, uh, it's become an omni-channel. So that means that it's virtual and in, in like physical. So um, they have a store, like they have a brick and mortar store and they have a virtual store. So they had to do all, all those together. And yeah, omni-channel is, uh, Walmart's become an omni-channel one. And then online retail sector, is uh, growing faster than offline segments. So the computer and computer electronics are the highest selling thing online. And then it's apparel and accessories. So like t-shirts, you know, clothing, accessories, etc. And then 80% of internet users will buy online in 2020. So during the pandemic, it was, you know, most of what, purchases were and so companies like staples they benefit the most and then amazon too so the staples would be an omni uh one and then amazon would be vir just purely virtual so the omni channel is when they integrate web operations with physical store operations so Walmart's doing that, so they use the physical store, so there's going to be, like, uh, in-store pickup and uh, also, like, online ordering. And so Walmart's using that a lot now. Staples uses that. Um, so a lot of these – lot of, every store these days kind of has to be an omni-channel. Yeah, and they all, they all had to be in the pandemic because they had no choice or else they would go out of business. They were technically all virtual during that period because they couldn't even run their physical store. But yeah, the, this is the chart. So uh, the, in 2019, computers and electronics were the highest selling thing online. And then it was second at air apparel and accessories. So t-shirts, clothing, jewelry, et cetera. And then furnitures, home furnishings, health and personal care auto and auto parts and then so on. 
So, yeah. So those, so that's the breakdown. And then as online retail is like over the years, online retail has grown a lot. Uh, so t 2014, it was, it's, it was about a third of what it is today. And then, yeah, so it's, it's grown a lot. Like it's grown like 200% over the past, like eight years. It's, it's growing a lot. Like it's, uh, and then it's going to just keep growing. Online retail is uh, becoming bigger and bigger. And then, so the so yeah, it's important to minimize costs, and you can do that through a virtual store because you don't have to have a physical location. It can be all online. So that's important, like you, you win at a cost point of view compared to physical source. And uh, you want to be strategic, so you want to have like higher quality product and uh, compete on price with other companies. So yeah, the, so with an online store, the barriers to entry are very low. Uh, they're very low because it's low cost, uh, no one, Really, like anyone can make an online store. There's no restrictions. Uh, then, but yeah, there are power of suppliers. Um, it depends. Like some some suppliers have more power, which would be harder for you as a seller. Um, some would have less power, so it'd be better for you as a seller. Then power of customers. Uh, if if it's higher, if customers have higher power, then uh, the product might have to be cheaper. Um, so you would make less profit and higher power customers would be through, they would have higher power because there's a lot of competition in the market or they don't need the product as much as, um, as much, they don't need the product that much. So that, that might be an issue for you because you wouldn't be able to price it that high because, uh, they can go to somebody else for a cheaper product or they don't really need it. So they, they wouldn't purchase it. Um, the yeah, existence of substitute products that that would make more competition so they could just switch to the other guy if if your product is not of high quality or not priced where they want so like a lot of these things are uh important things in in making a store And then, so Amazon, uh, the, so what they want out of Amazon, what they're like going for, their company, they want the lowest prices, best selection, most customer centric. They, they do retail, they do third party merchants. So like you make an Amazon store and you sell. And then Amazon Web Services where that's like, that's their cloud storage arm. So you can, you can, uh, so with Amazon Web Service, that's, uh, they make money off of holding your data. So like you can, you can, uh, you can save your data onto web, Amazon Web Services. And also they, they also facilitate transactions. So they, uh, they do a lot of, uh, they do a lot of transaction tracking. So that's, they make a lot of money off of that. I compete a lot of with the Oracle on that and they're growing a lot with revenue and they're profitable. So they, they always want to maximize sales volume, lower costs and prices, acquire new companies and produce more, more products and services. So then they, They want to increase profits for Amazon Web Services and make sustainable profits. Amazon Prime is a good source of revenue for them through subscriptions. And also what they do with the Amazon Prime is that they, that they have movies you can pay per view on. That's another 
so they so you pay let's say nine ninety nine four ninety nine for viewing that movie or TV show. So that's another part of revenue they can have. Like there's the Amazon Prime shows you can watch with a subscription, and then there's other movies and TV on there that you can pay extra for. So they can make a lot of money on that. And then, so they're trying to grow in other ways too. So the, so Amazon will be under virtual merchant where they're fully virtual. Omnichannel is virtual and physical. So Walmart would be under that umbrella. Catalog merchant is getting, is very small now, but like LL Bean, Cabela's are under there. And then manufacturer direct would be Apple's Dell, Sony, um, like any company that would, um, you buy it right from the manufacturer instead of, yeah. So here, uh, 45% are virtual merchants. So that's a lot, a lot of that is Amazon and Shopify. So like, yeah, Amazon, Shopify would be under this 45%. So anything Etsy, Amazon, Shopify, Square, and then Omnichannel 31% would be like Walmart and all those other ones. The catalog is very low at 8%. 16% of manufacturer direct, so that's Apple, Dell, and then anything that you get right from the manufacturer. So it's, it's increasingly going more virtual. Yeah. So then the, so online is the fastest growing retail channel in commerce. And so companies that exist today, they all have to create an, a shop, uh, an online shopping experience. If they don't, they're going to, they're going to just lose business. Every business has to have a uh, e-commerce uh, channel. So that's, that's very important. Um, yeah, because, and also, are they, the good thing about e-commerce for them is that they can use, um, they can use personalization through big data analytics. And that's something you can't do in a physical store because they can't, like, if you walk in, like, if I walk into Walmart, they can't be like, oh, hey, Michael, um, here's all this sports equipment because they don't, they don't know who I am. But on, on, online, they can do that because they, they know that I like sports and stuff, right? But if I'm going to a physical store, they would never, like, be coming to me with all the products I like. So, like, the big advantage of online retailing is that they know what you like, right? Um, physical store, even if they did that for every customer, it would just seem weird, right? Like, they'd just be approaching you and they just know everything that, about you. That would just be strange. For some reason, we lo we're more okay with it online. Uh, for some reason. I think it's because we're not, you know face-to-face -face with a human so it's it's not as it doesn't feel as you know concerning but it's it's still concerning because uh yeah the, they have a lot of data on us but so the service sector is the largest and most expanding part of economies of advanced industrial nations that includes doctors lawyers accountants business consultants and so on so like i said with the final project uh, it's an e-commerce website, but I expanded it to, if you want to do an affiliate marketing website where you do affiliate marketing for your blog, that's fine. Or even if you want to do a service business, like if you want to create a accountant agency where you do taxes for people, you can do that as your final project. You just have to make a website with that. Um, yeah, just I wanted to expand that because you can do a service business. And then business consultants, like if you do, let's say, putting together business plans and you put together, like, it, how to grow a business, like, that's, that's fine for companies um, because the service sector is about 80% of U.S. GDP. So 20% is the consumer products that we we're talking about. This is 80%. So you could just do a service business if you want to. Uh, yeah, like, if you have, like... I'll ask the class, what types of skills do you have from, like, what types of skills can you think of that you could provide as a service to people? Like, um, for me, it's tutoring. Like, I do a lot of tutoring. Haircuts? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good one. Uh, anybody else? Languages, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, you could be a nutritionist. Uh, that's great. 
Like you could, so you could make a hair cutting website. You could make, um, what did you say again? Yeah, you, you could be a translator. You could be a, a language tutor. You could be, yeah, you could do all that kind of stuff. You could do a website for that. And then for nutritionists, you could do a website for that. Uh, yeah, what about you? So anybody online? What? Skincare. Yeah, you could do that. You could put that together. Uh, website for that and offer that as a service. That's great. Anybody online have any ideas of what type of service you could provide as a, um, on like as a business and make a website for? Because this could be your final project if you wanted it to be. Like for your group, you could make a service website if you wanted to do that. And then you could even uh, take that and make it into like find customers uh, while we're doing the project or after. You could you could do that as a side business. But yeah, anyone online, if you think of any service that you could offer as a business, let me know. Just stay in the chat or on mute uh, while we keep going. I'll keep going, but if you think of it, just let me know. So here. Um, so some of these examples are finance, insurance. So you could be a financial advisor. Uh, so you could be, you could do this through, uh, so Sun Life Financial, you could do that through Sun Life Financial, uh, Investors Group, Freedom 55 Financial. Let me know if you're interested in doing any of that, finance or insurance. The, I'll give you the contact information on how to, get into that, uh, it would be a good a good business to do financial advising. I know some people that do very well with it. Uh, real estate, you could become a mortgage agent and a real estate agent. I became a mortgage agent recently. So if you want to, uh, so I'm doing that on the side. If you want to do that, uh, let me know. I'll send you the information. Uh, travel, you could be a travel agent. You could do a website for that. Uh, so travel agent, the help people find like where they want to travel. Then, so let me know if you want information about that so you can make a website on that. Then accounting, do that. You can do taxes for people. You can do financial statements. Legal, you'd have to get some specialized training for legal. Like you have to go to law school or do paralegal. Uh, business services, you can do that right now. Consulting advertising, marketing, and so on. You can create a advertising business. Yeah, like you don't need training for that. Like you could just start it. Um, health services, that's, you need, you need some, like you need to go to medical school or nursing. So like um, that, you need some specialized training for that. Educational services, you could, you could do right now, you could create a tutoring company. You could maybe start your own private school. Uh, you there would have to be a lot of a lot of uh, registration with the government for that, but you could create your own private school and charge students like 20, 20 grand a year. Yeah, so that those are good ideas. You can do any of those for your final project or any any ones that you uh, that you think of. So then. E-commerce has transformed banking and financial services. So, so many companies provide online services like online banking. Uh, if, if, if one doesn't, if like a bank doesn't provide that, then they're in real trouble. The, so Laurentian Bank wasn't providing that for the longest time. And that's one of the reasons why they weren't doing very well. Then, so yeah, like it's important to have uh, like a, so it's important to have online services. So yeah, the, so 65% uh, of US adults use online banking. And then there's a lot of savings for banks because they don't have to have, they don't have to have uh, branches with online banking. And, uh, 
yeah, the it's important online banking like Equitable Bank, for example, Equitable Bank, they're based here in Water, in Kitchener Waterloo. They they're a great bank and they don't have any branches. It's all online. So like these banks are springing up where they don't have a branch at all, but they just do it online. Cuz these days we can we can do all financial stuff online. Uh then so online travel market you could do this as a service, so like airline tickets, greatest source of revenue, hotel reservations, car rentals, travel packages. So that's so like getting people that through being a travel agent, that's a good type of service business as well. And then here, so with this is the online travel service revenues. So twenty twenty so like from twenty nineteen, twenty twenty went down from 208 billion to 115 billion. And then because of that, the pandemic, it basically went down by 50%. People were just not traveling that much. And then 2021, it rebounded a bit to 140 billion. And then 2022, it's back to where it was in 2019, 209 billion. It's, it, the year's not over yet, they're just projecting that it'll get to 209 billion before the end of the year. And then they're projecting that it'll just keep growing about say 2% per year. So yeah, it's it's a growing industry and it's coming back. So being a travel agent would be a good small, like a good entrepreneurial opportunity for anybody here. So like, that'd be a good idea too. I know a travel agent and like, uh, it's a good business. Uh, then, so online travel industry, there's a lot of intense competition. It's hard to be price competitive. There's a lot of industry consolidation. That means that companies merge together. So like smaller companies merge together to become bigger companies. And that makes it more anti-competitive. And then you need to ensure that you, you make, you, you make your web pages optimized for search. So just ensure that you use all the keywords and uh, tags and everything. And then mobile applications are important. And then social media content reviews are important to uh, to keep, like to develop, you know, brand. And then also you could also do uh, recruitment. Like you could recruit people. You could, uh, you could create a business where you're helping people get jobs, right? And they pay you, let's say, 10% of their first year's salary or something, or 5% or whatever. So you could do that. You create a recruitment business where you like search for jobs for people and then they give you maybe 5% of their salary or let's say 500 bucks or like maybe a fixed payment or a percentage of their salary. Yeah, like a thousand, maybe a thousand bucks of their first salary or 10% of their first salary, whatever, 5% of the first salary. So like you could use LinkedIn Career Builder Monster to help them. Uh, you help them with you know print ads, correct those recruitment staffing firms, referrals. So yeah, like you could um, help them with a resume. You could help them with the cover letters. So that'd be that could be a good business. Uh, yeah, like you could do that as your service. They they can pick up food for you and you pay for it. So, and also there's this, there's this one where it's more for rich people. So like uh, private jets. So like when you're not using a private jet, which is like, you know, maybe, maybe like n nobody in this city, maybe one person in this province, but when, when you're not using your private jet, you can rent it out to people for some ridiculous money. So, so it's, it's only for like, maybe like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's like for like 10. Maybe it's, maybe it's like for maybe, I'd say maybe a maybe a million people world, probably 100,000 people worldwide, I guess. Yeah, like all across the world, probably 100,000. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're, like they rent out the jet for, let's say, a, a night or like a week. And then they pay massive amounts of money. So there's those ride ride sharing apps and uh, yeah, the sharing economy, that's what they call it. 
um, if you could, if you could, cre- if you wanted to create an app that, uh, that for anything that you, you can share, um, they've done it for cars, they've done it for private jets, they've done it for houses and apartments. If you can think of something else that you could, uh, rent out to people for maybe like a week, two weeks, month, a year, um, that would be a good idea. So the first question is what features did, or practices have made Instacart successful and what challenges do grocery and meal delivery services face and have you used any grocery or meal delivery services? If so, what was your experience? So I'll ask everybody here um, those questions. Uh, like feel free if you want to answer all three or one, one or two or three. And anybody online who wants to answer, unmute or sit in chat. Does anyone else, does anyone have any answer to those ones? Feel free to just do a search about Instacart. It's basically um, you order groceries on Instacart and they send it to you basically. That's good. Yeah, you're great. Um, great. That was good. Yeah, the um, the yeah, the, the good points about Instacart. Yeah, the I think yeah to add on to that, I think the gas price increase will it'll affect a lot of prices and make it more expensive. Also. The, I think competition would be a big problem that they would face because they would, they would not, they'd have to reduce their prices and increase their product quality to compete. So those are problems that they'll face. Uh, those would be competitive pressures and yeah, also substitute items that aren't available at the point. Some won't be available. Um, yeah, great points. Does anyone else have any? Um, there's somebody in the chat that quick service. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it's quick, convenient. You don't have to go to the store. Does anyone else have any input for those ones? Yeah, good points, yeah. Yeah, good points, yeah, the quality and uh, th- th- that's a good point, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that's great. Everyone, that's great. So then the, so with COVID-19 pandemic, there's been a lot of, so a lot of people are switching to digital content and then tech companies become significant players in content production. So like Amazon Prime with a lot of their new shows, Netflix with all their new content. A lot of these new streaming services have popped up like Peacock, the Apple TV, uh, Paramount, Discovery, a lot of ones. And there's been a lot more competition in the industry which is a good thing for our, us consumers because there's price comp there's a lot more price competition and uh, that pro produces more high quality content and we're getting a lot more value now because Netflix is not, not a monopoly in the business anymore. Then, so ebook sales growth has slowed because more people have switched to, you know, streaming content. So they've been watching more like Netflix and Paramount and Apple TV and all the streaming services rather than ebook, reading ebooks. Uh, then digital music has been, uh, people have been using more digital music rather than physical because a lot of these stores were closed during the pandemic. They were not allowed to open. So uh, people were purchasing things online. And uh, yeah, then that further forced acceleration of purchasing digital music. And then cloud services. So like Netflix and Amazon Prime, Paramount, Apple TV, all those ones, they, they require a lot of cloud services to facilitate the, the streaming. So like they, they require a lot of cloud, uh, cloud, um, services to do that. So Amazon Web Service, uh, Oracle, all those companies. So a lot of uh, spending on on like housing it in, you know, those data warehouses. And then so streaming has overtaken TV and it'll keep overtaking TV as, because people prefer to, you know, choose when to watch instead of, you know, uh, waiting for the show to come on. So here as this chart, as the years go on, the so digital, that's basically streaming. So as the years go on, this will keep going up. This will go, the TV will go down, radio will go down, other traditional media, other news, newspapers, magazines will go down. So this will go up and these will go keep going down yeah so digital streaming is the future of all these because everything is like everything is being uh repurposed like everything is being created on digital streaming now instead of all these other mediums so so uh so I'm going to ask uh, these questions. What are some of the defining socioeconomic and behavioral patterns of millennials? So like what, um, what are like the behaviors of people in so, like people, like, like, what are they buying? What are they, like, what are they usually doing with their time? Millennials are, so definition of millennial, it's, it's about, like, I think it's mid twenties, mid thirties. So, what are they usually doing with their time? What are they usually purchasing? That's true. That's good. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Anyone online want to add to that? That was that was really good. 
Yeah, anyone want to add here uh, in the classroom or online to that? Yeah. Yeah, they, they're really into like TikToks, like small, short form content, TikTok. They like, they don't have a, the attention span is lower than like older generations. They want really quick content. So TikTok's a big thing. The, the short, short videos, that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the short, short, quick content is really, it's, it's really, it's really popular these days. Um, yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. And then in what ways does evidence contradict stereotypes about millennials' behavior patterns? I think we'll skip that. Uh, so why are millennials so sought after by advertisers? Why do advertisers want to like target millennials? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Actually, they have, um, they are entrepreneurs. Yeah. Uh, on the other side, they like to create business. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and then, do you self-identify as a millennial? Why or why not? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, th I think the I think the uh, definition is I think it's nineteen. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, so it's like people, millennials now would be in their mid 20s to mid 30s, I think. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So the, so does time on the internet reduce time spent with other media? So yeah, it does because it's more so like the internet is pretty much producing everything now. So television is done on the internet, magazines are done on the internet, newspapers are done on the internet. So like internet is replacing it all basically because uh, like all of it's being done on the internet. So then, so uh, the so yeah, physical products replaced by digital. That's that's a great point. So like all this, all this stuff is being replaced by digital. So yeah, uh, the so how to make money, descriptions. So a lot of things like they use Substack. What they do is they use this thing called Substack. It's a lot used by people who they create like the modern day magazines and newspapers. They use Substack to get subscriber revenue. That's the big thing that they do. A la carte, that's like, you know, you pay per view. Like you pay for seeing the new Thor movie online, let's say. And then advertising supported free. And then, uh, so, uh, so advertising supported, you make money off of, like people watch ads and you make money off of the ad ads. So those are good ways to make money online um, as your as your career. Also, affiliate marketing you can make money on affiliate marketing. That's through Amazon or another affiliate a place, uh, and you can make money off of having an e-commerce store on your website. So you could create free content, and this drives users to paid content. So you make free content, and then you say that if you want if you want more. You have to pay me, that sort of thing. Uh, then they 
they pay for high high quality content. So maybe your paid content is is of higher quality than your free. So so yeah, you could be providing free content, but with advertising. And let's say you provide like 10 minutes of that free content as a preview, and then you provide 60 minutes of paid content. So it's kind of like an advertisement for them paying you. So you could do that as a, as a model. You do that through Substack. You do that through Substack. And then, so iTunes provides a good fee model. Uh, then YouTube, you could, uh, uh, you could make pay per view.